Take a movie of things behaving in the micro world, take a picture of it all, and then run the movie backwards, that what you see in this backwards movie also obeys the laws of physics. And that's not true, of course, of uh, the movies you see at a movie theater, <laughs> or life, if you run it backwards, it doesn't look right. In everyday experience and in the macroscopic world, the past and the future couldn't be more different. In the micro world, if you ran the movie backward, you couldn't tell which is the backward one and which is the forward one. That's, that's really strange. In other theories, it can seem puzzling that there is no concept or flow of time in the subatomic world within the atoms that is governed by the strong nuclear force. But in this theory, nothing could be more logical because the future is unfolding with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment in an interactive process that is unfolding outside the atomic nucleus and is relative to the electromagnetic force. In such a theory, the mathematics of quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process with classical physics representing processes over a period of time, as in Newton's differential equations. In ancient Greece, it was believed that the atoms were indestructible, but now we know this is not so. Atoms that decay with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation could represent a problem for a theory that says that the future is unfolding photon by photon relative to the atoms of the periodic table. But the weak nuclear force explains radioactive decay with some very unusual characteristics that can only really be understood as part of a logical process if what we see and feel as the continuum of time is formed by photon-electron interactions. It is impossible to predict when a particular atom will decay regardless of how long the atom has existed. However, for a group of atoms, the group expected decay rate is characterized in what is called half-lifes. The half-life represents a time after which half of the group's nuclei will have decayed. Mainstream physics has no objective or logical understanding of why we should have such a property as half-life when we are dealing with decaying atoms. But if time and the future itself is relative to the atoms interacting with electromagnetic radiation or light, it would be logical that probabilities are built into the process itself. Therefore, we can't predict the decay of an individual atom and only measure the half-life of a group of atoms. It is interesting that when we have an atom with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation, there is the potential that the future will be relative to that radioactivity. This might be in the form of a potential cancer risk. I like to think that this represents the delicate symmetry of space and time that life is based upon being broken by the radiation. This idea is supported by the weak nuclear force being the only known interaction that does not conserve parity and violates CP symmetry. In this theory, the future is unfolding with the movement of charge, with matter-antimatter annihilation, representing a fundamental part of the process. The annihilation of the antimatter represents the past, with perfect symmetry between positive and negative charge, and between matter and antimatter. It is this symmetry that is represented by CP symmetry that is broken by the radiation or radioactive decay of the weak force or interaction. We could say that there is a mirror image 
between the future and the past, at the moment of creation, or at each dipo moment. In such a theory, the universe is a continuum with an uncertain future continuously unfolding relative to the atoms of the periodic table. Each one of the four fundamental forces has their own individual part to play in this process, and this is why they vary so greatly in magnitude and behavior. If we start with the electromagnetic force that is carried by the photon forming the movement of charge creating the flow of electric and magnetic fields. In this theory it is this interaction between the photons and the electron probability cloud of the atoms that form the ever-changing world of our everyday life that we see and feel as the passage or continuum of time. We have the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, with each photon oscillation or vibration only occurring once, but with the process of energy exchange as a whole forming a unique and uncertain future. With the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons, acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer, forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. This might sound very far-fetched, but the electromagnetic force is responsible for all macroscopic properties of the chemical elements, including all chemical bonding. Whenever the bonds that hold the atoms together form or break, there is an exchange of photon energy with the movement of charge. The electromagnetic force is fundamental to cell life, with the build-up and organization of positive and negative charge relative to the membrane of each living cell. Also, all man-made devices using electric current, such as television, lasers and computers, rely on the principles of the electromagnetic force. The three fundamental forces that have been explained so far, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force, are all interactions that are carried by a quantum or an elementary particle. The gravitational force is the odd one out and is modelled on a continuous classical field. Mainstream physics believes this is because the elementary particle that forms gravity has not yet been found. But in this theory it is because gravity is not a real force at all. It is only a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. This idea is supported mathematically with electromagnetism and gravity sharing the inverse square law representing the geometry of this universal dynamic process. Every action creates a reaction and the inward force of gravity is a reaction to the outward momentum of photon energy with the movement of charge as a process of continuous energy exchange or continuous creation. Photon energy slows up the rate that time flows, forming a vortex in space relative to the energy and momentum of each object. Mass will increase relative to this, with the time dilation of Einstein's relativity being part of this universal process. There is no action at a distance in this theory. Just as in Einstein's theory of general relativity, the gravitational field propagates at the speed of light with the electric and magnetic fields. Within such a dynamic process, we can think of electromagnetism as an interactive ether that moves relative to the Earth. Therefore, it would not 
show up in any experiment that was relative to the movement of the Earth. This process unites gravity with the other three fundamental forces. Within a universal process that is unfolding in just three dimensions with one variable in the form of time. In such a theory, the parallel universes of string theory are just future possibilities and opportunities in our one three dimensional universe of continuous energy exchange, continuous creation. In my other videos, I explain that at the most fundamental level, this is a process of symmetry forming and breaking that forms greater degrees of freedom for entropy or disorganization, and also greater degrees of freedom for the diversity and complexity of life. With the whole theory being explained by just one equation representing the dynamic geometry of this process. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe. It will help the promotion of this theory.